This is a short video that uh, gives a little bit of guidance on the assessment number two for the module C6010. This is the individual assignment and evidence-based conservation plan. Now, um, the first thing you want to do is to uh, find your data and to uh, look at the uh, variable explanations for your assigned data set. Just before we do that, I'm just going to have a peek here at the hub page, show you where that stuff is. So um, if you just scroll down, now I know a lot of people have already found and accessed this assignment brief um, and the, the data sets. So I'm going to look at those in turn and just go through them a little bit with you. If I just look at the um, assignment brief first, what you'll, what you'll see when you read this is that you're going to design a conservation project on your own. And um, the project you design is going to involve some course of data collection that is going to create evidence. The evidence could be, you choose what the evidence is, it could be some um, data to see if a conservation intervention works, or it could be some evidence that uh, maybe you've got some different areas you're thinking of, and uh, it could be some evidence that um, asks the question whether there is some difference between the areas, um, or, or something else. That part uh, is left to you. Now, um, we want to link it to specific species. Um, I think most of the language implies that uh, we want one specific species that you pick, but um, I think in some cases you may find that it's, uh, it's a, a collective group of species. We can talk about that during this um, video just a little bit. One of the important things I've emphasized throughout this is that there's a, a claims and evidence framework that you should stick to. This is um, claims that you, you might make about um, the conservation impact of, say, an invasive species on your species of uh, conservation concern. There should be some evidence linked to that. And you've got two ways of, of uh, examining that. You should use both of these. In fact, you, you must use both of these for this. One is the uh, data you've been assigned. We'll come on to that. And another one is the, um, the, uh, the literature, the scientific literature that um, will comprise the, the background review that you need to do. So uh, r really, your goal is to, to talk about management. You know, management given a little bit of evidence. Um, you're going to choose a species. This should be inspired by the data you've been assigned. There's information, just a little information in these data sets, and you're going to have to use your intuition to assemble a plausible project that fits the data you've been assigned. Okay, so um, one of the things you're going to do, all of you at this level have had some kind of uh, data handling and, uh, dare I say, statistical analysis training. May have been in the second year, may seem like a long time ago, but I'm not expecting a statistical analysis report here. I'm ex expecting a, a very brief um, assessment of, of the data and probably a graph. You're going to link the, um, the finding based on your data, your exploration of your assigned data to your proposed project plan. Now I, I specify that it, it should be linked in some reasonable way. You can be a little creative. Please, please do be a little creative. But, uh, you know, also, just take this advice. It should be linked. Um, you want to do a little bit of, of, um, of research to, to identify the conservation status of the, um, of the impacted native species. And, um, and finally, if there's a, a lack of information in this, um, you're going to uh, to identify that as an outcome, identify the knowledge gaps. Okay, so there's a project structure here, but at this point I'm going to click back over to the slides and uh, just remind myself that 
you know, one of the first things you have to do is find your data and look at the variable explanations. I gave, you know, b very brief detail of this in the email that I sent around. And um, many of you have, um, have found this and motored on, and a few of you have, have asked this question. So I just want to point out to everyone, if you haven't delved into it yet, that right here there's a link to your data set. And uh, you need to find the Excel sheet that says, look in there to find your data set. Okay, so if you open this, this uh, folder, it's going to look something like... Um, like this when you download it. If you scroll down to the bottom, <coughs> there's the one that says find your data set here. There's one that says variable explanations. So the first one you need to do is to find your data set. The second one you need is the variable explanations. So let's look at each of those. First, um, the find your data set. So for all of you, um, there is uh, your student ID. You just find your student ID and see which of the data files belongs to you. Okay, and there's, there's quite a lot of them. There are actually a few more Excel files uh, in, the, in the zip than there are students. So, um, you know, find the right one. Next thing you're going to want to do is uh, open up your data set. Now, um, there are all these data sets. I'm just going to pick one that that uh, no one was assigned to. I'll just open that. And uh, we've got a lot of stuff. Well, your first, your first um, task is to, to orient yourself to all this stuff. Now, um, I, I hope some of you are thinking, why is this guy giving us this spreadsheet with all this stuff? I, you know, it, there's no explanation. What is this guy even thinking? Let me tell you, after working um, around and with and for conservation organizations and project leaders for over 20 years of my career, this data is in much better shape than the vast majority of data you might encounter working on the ground in research. This is very realistic assignment based on my experience. So you often are asked to do something where you don't have perfect explanation, where there is no one to take you by the hand, where you have to do a little digging, and ultimately you have to do the best you can as a, as a scientist to make an impact on conservation in this world. That is what this uh, very assignment is about. So you're going to have to use all the skills that you have up to now to do that. Well. Indeed, it would be hard to do that if you didn't pay attention to the, uh, the, head, the headings on these columns. And um, to look at that, you need to look in, in that um, fold, uh, the file that I alerted you to, the variable explanations. Okay, so the variable explanations looks like this. Okay, there it is. Okay, so now this file is uh, what, what I, I, in my world, would call a data dictionary. It gives us a specific link to, um, to each of these variable names. Let me just, just zoom in here just a little bit and um, zoom in a little bit on this one. And so uh, for all of the, the files, they're arranged in the same way, even though all the files have information about um, different studies. And, and different invasives and different impacted species. So uh, this first column, the species name, we can see is the invasive species' name. Um, and uh, it might say, um, it might s use the, the summary NA if uh, there are multiple invasive species. So in, th in this case, there our species name for this this um, file 40 is called um, Bythotrephes. Okay. Um, there's an invasive description. What is a Biotrephes? Well, um, if you don't know what that is, it's a genus. And uh, it's described here that it's an animal 
It's a cladocerin. Uh, and its common name is the spiny water flea. Now this is a genus of spiny water fleas. We'll have a, a look at one in a second. Second, we've got um, some kind of category of a measure of the invader abundance type. So for this invasive species, Bythotrephes, um, we've got some kind of measure for it. Okay, so the invader abundance type is a category a type of invader abundance. So there's relative, there is um, density, there is cover, and there is biomass, which is a, a mass of the invader per unit area. Okay, so ours is biomass for this file. And then there's one called invader abundance units. Guess what? That is the units of the mass per area for our biomass. Of course, this will be different for each of the files. So you'll have to uh, have a look at that. For ours, it's the um, um, bythotrephes milligrams per square meter. Okay, so uh, they must have done some two-dimensional sampling for this. Um, now the abundance of the invader is the actual first quantitative variable. So this is the the milligrams of bythotrephes per meter squared. So this is the measure. So there, in this data set there are a few zeros, quite a few, and then some measures in the unit milligrams per meter squared. And then there are some at the bottom that have quite large numbers. Um, the response is a numerical measure of the response measure. So here we have a response. Okay, this is a decimal value. What is the response? Um, well, read on and we'll find out. Uh, we have a time, typical, um, typically the year. All right, this is a range of years for our data set. I'm just going to scroll over a little bit. We have a response type. This is, um, this is similar to the invader abundance type, but it's for our response um, variable. And so it's either abundancy, diversity, Abundance, diversity, evenness, or richness. For ours, it's abundance. And our response units. The response units are, um, are measures of uh, what they are. Now, our response type is abundance, and our response units are relative. So it explains they're the proportion of individuals of cyclopoid copepods in the epilimnion. Okay, so um, if we look back at our response, the response units, this is a proportion. So it's a proportion of the relative abundance of um, some copepods, you know, relative because this is a proportion relative to the um, abundance of the invaders. And um, okay, so um, multi, multi species response multi spa resp Now, uh, this is a category that uh, asks, uh, is the response metric measured for a single species or multiple species? So, um, in this case, it affects multiple species. So, for if you were assigned this data set, you would want to specify that if, if you want your plan to be targeted at, at this uh, same group. Having said that, some people might take this evidence and uh, pick another species that occurs in a, in a habitat where this problem occurs. What is the habitat, you ask? Well, it's located, <laughs> the location. In this case, um, it's the site location or the country, but uh, it is a little vaguer here. It, it says it's in the epilimnion. So I have a couple of challenges here. We have a challenge that's specifically part of the assignment to uh, analyze this data in some way. And um, what every data set is going to contain is some measure of how much or how many or the mass of the invaders and uh, a response that is um, some measure of um, the impact that that invader has on a different species or habitat. Okay, so it's these two um, quantitative variables for most data sets that you're going to be analyzing.
We have a couple of questions here, which we'll address directly. Um, so we've found our data, we've examined our variable explanations. What species does it involve? Well, we can read them. Um, you guys may already know all about um, spiny water fleas. Um, it's a little bit of a niche conservation um, impacting invasive, but uh, maybe you do already know about it. But if you don't, here's where your first little bit of research will come in. Likewise, if you don't know about cyclopoid copepods, that's where a little bit of research. Now, I'm not asking for a thesis amount of research here. It's just a little bit of um, um, Googling, probably using Google Scholar and some other, some other sources. So uh, what I did for this was um, I first looked up a little bit of information for um, Bythotrephes. And uh, you know, this is a good picture. This is one that could be used in your, um, I think we might get to it in a moment, the recommendation to use a, um, to use a uh, graphic of some kind. I, I invite you to use graphics for, um, that are open, but uh, this one is very convenient. In this case, I've found one that already has an attribution and it would be appropriate to do that. Um, there's plenty of information here. Uh, on this page. It, it was just one of the first pages when I literally just uh, searched for the, the genus of, uh, of the invasive. So if you read a little bit about your invasive for this one, it's a, an invasive um, invertebrate that gets into the water column and it um, becomes so abundant that it crowds out the uh, native copepods. Okay, it's starting to sound like we can make some sense of this. This region of the U.S. is um, often referred to as the Great Lakes region. And uh, if you read a little bit about the invader, you'll see that it, uh, it likes the Great Lakes and it likes um, to live in certain parts of the water column in bodies of water and it likes brackish water, all of which fit this general area. Uh, and you can scroll down, there's quite a lot of stuff. And I found this page that has quite a lot of, um, you know, research results. Now, I specify three to five. We'll come on to the three to five peer-reviewed publications in a moment. But, uh, you know, you could do a lot worse than picking one of these and actually reading the paper. Um, you are trained to read scientific papers. I expect you to read a couple of scientific papers for this and to be able to articulate in your own words very briefly the uh, relevance of those papers. Which ones should you pick? Well, pick one that's relevant, pick one that's interesting to you, pick one that, um, that uh, you can exploit. Maybe you can pick one that, um, by the things we talked about in class, have been recognized as being important by other scientists, how many times it's been cited, and so forth. All right, so um, this is the spiny water fleas. What about the copepods? Well, um, you can do a similar thing. I'm not going to do the similar thing. I'll let you do your own research for this, but they're just a copepod. They're, they comprise the plankton, and they're an important source of um, food for predators, and they're an important part of the food chain all around the world. And uh, if we just did a little bit of a search, now I searched for this phrase, and this is this kind of search. You, you want to um, design your search phrase, but this kind of design of search phrase would be very adequate for almost every every uh, person who's going to do this project. So I searched for um, bythotrephes impact on cyclophoid copepods, <laughs> and uh, you know what did I get? I got a thousand results. Now this is quite a small number of results, and yet because I used the terminology re represented in my paper, I came up with a perfectly usable list of, of things. If I scan down here, I see a couple that are cited by 44, 47, 133, cited by 40. You know, I would tend to try to get ones that are on the, the, the high side of close to 50. Um, and you have a couple of these. Um, impact of bythotrephes, blah, 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 Harp Lake, Canada, and assessment based on predator consumption. 
this is a great one. I'd probably look at it. It's this one up here, implication of an invertebrate predator's atypical effects on a pelagic zooplankton community. This is perfect. Another little trick, is you could click through, see who cited that one more recently. So maybe, maybe a couple of these are good, and there's some big citations here. Okay, so this is this is accumulating relevant um, literature. Um, now consider creating some evidence. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean uh, I don't want to beat around the bush on this, but I expect you to analyze this data. Do something feasible. You all have statistics training. And I don't expect anything glorious. I expect a very, very simple um, summary of this. And I want a graph. And I want a, an appropriate statistical test. So uh, you probably all trained to use GenStat or SPSS. But it's perfectly reasonable to do this stuff in Excel. Um, what we might do in this case is um, make some sort of scatter plot because it's too two variables, and I'm interested in the association between these variables. And if I do this, I see I've got a lot of zeros for the response, and uh, for the, the biomass of my invasive, I can see that I've got a lot of, um, of values that range, uh, that have a wide range. Well, if you're looking for the association of two numeric variables. One test you could do is a correlation test. There are some assumptions of correlation, like they should be, your variable should be normally distributed. Um, but the important part is that you can graph the data and pick an appropriate test. I'm not going to go through all of the tests because you all have had training um, to, uh, to do these kinds of tests. Instead, uh, this is where the creative part comes in. And uh, Excel, using Excel is, is just fine if you want to do that. Um, but I do expect to see a, uh, an evaluation. So what am I looking for? I want to be able to make a claim based on the evidence that I've created from my, from my uh, data. So I might be wanting to say, you know, as, as the biomass of my invasive down here on the x-axis, as that increases, what do I expect happens on average to the um, proportion of native copepods in the water column, in the epilimnium? Well, um, what it looks like to me is that when there's, down at this end, when there's very little of the invasive, we get some very high proportions of the native copepods, but when we have an abundance of the invasive, the proportion of native copepods is very small. And I, I would want to perform a correlation on this. Because the data are wonky, I would probably want to perform the Spearman rank correlation that doesn't need the, the um, assumption of normal distribution for my variables. OK. So uh, <coughs> that's what I mean by creating some evidence. And I'll, I'll read with you in just a moment the place in the, in the um, guidance that shows that. And research the literature. I've already showed you my little, my little research. Now, when you assemble your report, after you've done the things that I've just said, um, you, uh, you want to you wanna pick a, a species that you're going to work on. Now, in my case, I, I might have a choice for this data. I might, I might choose to focus on the plankton, the copepods, and that's fine. Um, why are they important? Give, do a little bit of research. You've got three to five citations to work with. Um, probably one of those citations that talked about impacts on plankton, one of the very first ones that I Googled up, would be perfect. Uh, but, but by all means, um, do research as you've been trained to do and, uh, and, and do it. You might also mention the habitat. In this case, it would be the Great Lakes and associated waterways in the U.S. Um, if I chose that, but maybe there is a literature where this problem is uh, in Europe or in Asia or in other places, that's fine too, as long as there's the evidence to back it up. The analysis of the previous study is the, uh, the data that you were assigned. 
and it should contain at least one plausible statistical analysis like the one I just discussed and a graph okay, to, provo to provide a link um, to the study you're going to propose. And then you're going to propose a new study. Um, maybe it will be something to mitigate the invasive and then a uh, course of data collection. Maybe you, you, um, <coughs> maybe you are going to reintroduce I'm not saying this is a good idea, I'm just giving a hypothetical example. Maybe you would reintroduce and augment the native copepods by, by breeding many of them in the lab and, and in introducing them into the, um, into the native habitat in the hopes that they would swamp out the others. And maybe you do this in a number of locations and then maybe you wait one year, 12 months, and then you go back and do some sampling. Maybe you have sampling before to get a baseline. And maybe that sampling would be uh, represented by a couple of the dots on your previous study. And uh, maybe your new sampling 12 months later, you would have an expectation that, um, that the, um, the proportion of native copepods would increase. Okay, so here we're just designing some data collection to test whether uh, our our intervention works, or to to augment some extra information, it doesn't have to be a population augmentation. It could be any sort of an intervention. Be creative on this. Um, the important part of this is that uh, you need to design um, design the study based on the information that you assemble. Okay, and your sources. I don't know why I have gotten quite a lot of questions about this. This should be the easiest thing. I have been actually quite surprised at the number and the questions that I've gotten. Can't be clearer. Your sources are three to five. Not less than three, not more than five peer-reviewed sources. And you're going to report them. Uh, as you make claims in your text, you will report them. Smith, 2002, in line. That's the Harvard style. And you're going to um, format your bibliography according to the Harvard style. That's the official style here at Harper Adams University, the Harper Adams Harvard style. Any Harvard style will do as long as you're consistent. It's the easiest thing in the world to pay attention to this detail, but it looks lazy when you don't pay attention to that detail. All right, so three to five must be peer reviewed Harvard style. Okay, I hope that's clear. Right, so let's go back, and I'm just going to look one more time at the um, old assessment guidance. And we've already gone over this part, this part I just mentioned. Media integration, uh, one relevant high-quality image. You know, I say from an unlicensed source, um, but, uh, you know, if you can't find one, if it's something weird like a copepod and you find a, a licensed source with attribution like the one I showed you, that's acceptable. If you've exhausted unlicensed for sources, that will be fine. Citations and bias. Um, okay, already gone over that. Um, I used this word several times, critically evaluate. So uh, critical evaluation is uh, that you're not just book reporting it here. This is uh, something I shouldn't have to emphasize to third year students, but uh, the Scientific literature is just evidence for the claims you're making, and uh, you should be critical at times of this. Um, the total report with this section should be about 1,000 to 1,500 words and should be in a Word document, and I go over the assessment criteria. This is just meant to be a little blast, a little extra guidance, and a little walkthrough about what I intend for you to do. I hope that it's helpful, and I'll see you later.